Um, I'm just going to uh, just talk a bit, this, uh, my monologue part. You know, if you know me, sometimes I can talk a lot, so I'll keep it kind of short. Um, this time around, um, this is the body that I have. And, uh, you know, before I can really comment anything on the life that I've had, I would like to say that um, uh, it was a little difficult for my parents, you know, certain expectations and things like that, especially my mom, you know, because I came out of her body. And, uh, and still today, it's sometimes difficult for her, depending she watches me do things or see how people see me and things like that. And regardless of the karma of why that I am the way that I am, she still carries a bit of responsibility. Um, and it was a number of years before I kind of actually even realized that I was unique. Um, and uh, I remember the, the first hardest thing I ever had to learn to do was tie my shoes. Okay. And we, we forget because it's pretty easy. Nowadays, we, we don't really have a lot of shoelaces. We have Velcro and slip-ons and all those things. Um, I always wear laced shoes because of how I am. Um, <clears throat> so over time, you know, uh, being a child, my childhood was difficult, <laughs> to say the least. Um, and, uh, you know, competition and things like that, sports, I, one of my early dreams was to be a professional baseball player, but uh, I'm not tall enough. <laughs> <laughs> So, you know, then I got a little older and I had to find a job. And uh, it was more difficult, it is more difficult to find a job washing dishes than uh, running my own business, which is kind of quirky, you know, it's a manual thing. So manual labor is not my gig. So, it took a while to understand things, you know, and then as, as I grew up, you know, it was hard for my parents and things like that. And then finally, I just kind of had to take off and fig figure things out for myself. What I started to realize is that some of the easier, some of the harder things in life um, are easy for me. And then some of the easier things are hard. Uh, one of the most difficult things I have to do is uh, clip my own fingernails. Uh, that's, that's tricky. <laughs> Floss my own teeth. That's, that's pretty cool. Um, but, uh, oh, popping zits sometimes can be <laughs> Of course, opening a jar of anything, or uh, using a manual can opener, those, those kind of things are difficult. Um, but then, you know, one day I, not having two hands allowed me to believe that nothing was impossible. And regardless of your body type or how many hands you have or anything like that, you know, I just started, started to realize that. And it was through, through the way that I am. And, uh, Because I believe that nothing is impossible, it unconsciously gives you all permission to believe the same. And that's a, a very powerful. You know, I had to realize that one day, that it's really a gift. And if I didn't believe it like that, it would make things a lot worse. You know, so one day I just changed how I thought. And that, you know, this is who I am for reasons, you know, past life or whatever you want to believe. You know, I believe what I believe, and you guys kind of believe what you believe. You know, I go back to that shoe tying thing. Like when I go down to tie my shoes, the uh, children come and gather. <laughs> <laughs> they want to check that out because they're like, man, it's so hard. You got to pull the laces and tie this thing over, do this, and yeah. you know. But then they watch me do it, and it makes them feel more open and comfortable. And then they see who I am as a human, and maybe they'll feel better about who they are as human, regardless of who they are. You know, we all have certain issues about how we think about ourselves. You know, and then it's really, you know, since I don't have a hand, everything that I do with my short side is all based in connection. So I cannot grab things or hold things or, you know, and that really helps my Aikido. If you've ever grabbed onto my short side, you will know. Mm -hmm. And as strong as this side is, but, you know, what I have to learn is to make my other side twice as strong, because it, it can be. Um, and it's really great in, in Aikido, uh, because if you're my uke, you have to learn to receive differently. And you have to be more present. You know, you can't assume that it's a two-handed thing. And then as Nage, you know, I pretty much has got to do my own thing. I have to create my own Nikido. It's not Nikio doesn't work that well for me on this. Sankyo is kind of unique. Uh, weapons. Yeah, you'll see that later. 
<laughs> so it's, I like not having two hands. Like for me, it's, it's really quite special. I, I, I get a lot out, out of it because it, it's, it's a gift. And then how I think about it, you know, affects how people think about themselves. And uh, I, I really wouldn't, if someone offered me another hand, I would give it to somebody who wanted it. Because <laughs> it, uh, it's really kind of cool. I, I get 50% off all manicures. <laughs> <laughs> And then, like, it's just thumbs up, or is it like it's hard to say? <laughs> but one thing that's very special is uh, when I cuddle. Now I don't have that arm that gets in the way or gets tight. <laughs> not based in a certain form of competition. You know, you don't have to have any kind of specific body type. And uh, you can go as, as deep as you want. It has no end. And in my life, that's what I wanted, was something that had no bottom. Because competitively, I ran out of, I don't know, whatever. And even, even things more subtle, like pocket billiards. I was ranked top 20 in the nation in college. And for a while, I, I, I used to run around Indiana and uh, hustle people. It's a guy with one hand who shoots good pull makes good money. <laughs> yeah, that's how I put myself through college. <laughs> but really, you know, one of, the, one of the great things about not having two hands is that uh, not only does it make me special, but it also makes my Aikido special. And then in turn, it also uh, helps you change a little bit how you think about Aikido. You know, it can in inspire you. As a sensei and a teacher, you know, my sensei, Kata sensei, said the greatest thing you could do as a teacher is just inspire people. You know, so it almost doesn't matter what I would do, you know, but uh, I like Aikido. <laughs> Thank you.